Hare Krishna, please accept my pranam. So I'm just sitting here in my Srila Gurudev's room on this auspicious day of Akshay Tritya, and I'm praying that this program will please him and that it will remain forever steady. Akshay, <laughs> it will never diminish. Akshay. Before we begin, it's important to reflect on what do we want to get out of this program? What is our purpose in doing this? As we'll learn later in this Rupa Shiksha program, the act of hearing, of speaking, of meditating on these instructions, the, our, the words of our Guru Varga, these verses that we're going to be memorizing, this is all watering. This is the act of watering. But often we think that we're watering the vine of devotion in the heart, when actually we're watering one of the parasitic creepers growing along the vine of devotion. And we're making that grow instead of the vine of devotion in our hearts. The vine of devotion in our heart will start to wither, will become stunted, and that upashaka will grow bigger and bigger and bigger. So we must cut down these upashakas. So the outcome of this program that we are aspiring for is that it helps us take these instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of Rupa Goswami, of our Guru Varga to heart, and that it creates an interest, uh, an excitement, a uh, relish in this bhakti ras that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disseminated to the world through Srila Rupa Goswami. Being the conditioned soul that I am, when I study anything, I want to become more knowledgeable. I want to feel more educated. I may want to one day be able to impress others with what I learned and gain some recognition. But this type of study actually pushes us further away from realizing the topic that we're studying, although we might think that we're understanding it thoroughly. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada he wrote in, in English in an issue of The Harmonist. There are persons who have got by heart almost everything that Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote without being able to catch the least particle of his meaning. Such study cannot benefit those who are not prepared to act up to the instructions lucidly conveyed by his words. Those who repeat the teachings of Thakur Bhakti Vinod from memory do not necessarily understand the meaning of the words they mechanically repeat. Those who can pass an empiric examination regarding the contents of his writings are not necessarily also self-realized souls. They may not at all know the real meaning of the words they have learned by the method of empiric study. Take, for example, the name Krishna. Every reader of Thakur Bhaktivinoda's works must be aware that the name manifests himself on the lips of his serving devotees, although he is inaccessible to our mundane senses. It is one thing to pass the examination by reproducing this true conclusion from the writings of Thakur Bhaktivinoda, and quite another matter to realize the nature of the holy name of Krishna by the process conveyed by the words. Thakur Bhakti Vinod did not want us to go to the clever mechanical reciter of the mundane sound for obtaining access to the transcendental name of Krishna. Such a person may be fully equipped with all the written arguments and explanation of the nature of the divine name. But if we listen to all these arguments from the dead source, the words will only increase our delusion. The very same words coming from the lips of the devotee will have the diametrically opposite effect. Our empiric judgment can never grasp the difference between the two performances. The devotee is always right. The non-devotee in the shape of the empiric pedant is always and necessarily wrong. In the one case, there is always present the substantive truth and nothing but the substantive truth. In the other case, there is present the apparent or misleading hypothesis and nothing but untruth. The wording may have the same external appearance in both cases. The non-devotee may recite verses from the scriptures identical to the ones recited by the devotee, and the devotee may even apparently misquote something, but the corresponding values of the two processes remain always categorically different. The devotee is right even when he apparently misquotes. The non-devotee is wrong even when he quotes correctly the very words, chapter, and verse of the scriptures. So if we're not careful, if we don't 
make any endeavor to follow this grave instruction, then we'll be defeating the very purpose that we're learning these verses. And I'm mentioning this all for myself. It would be good for us to help remind each other about this. One may think, well then why would I go through all the trouble of memorizing these verses and trying to understand all these things when it's just going to make me puffed up? But how can we ever purely follow these divine words if our heads are just filled up with all sorts of junk? We have to take out time every day to absorb our mind in these teachings. And to be able to memorize a verse, you really have to force your mind, you have to absorb your mind in it to, for it to be able to actually stick. Lots of times when you just read any book, you can just be reading and reading and reading and then put it away and forget about it. It doesn't require any real deep absorption, but for memorizing a verse, you'll never memorize it if your mind isn't fully absorbed in it. And once you have memorized a new verse, it's a treasure that you have that you can keep with you forever. And it is always helpful to go to the source. The way we interpret Shastra and the words of Guru might be mixed with our own misconceptions, our own biases. But when we memorize the direct words, they're, they're, they're unchanging. They're completely pure, they're purifying, and they're, they're so potent. I want to share a really juicy clip of Srila Gaur Govinda Goswami Maharaj where he stresses the importance of understanding the source language, understanding the verses in its own language, in Bengali. This use of these words are very, very appropriate words. If you can relish it, I don't know, unless you know this language. You understand? Unless you know this language, that my Guru Maharaj said, you have to release this, understand this, and release this, this Amruta, Chaitanya Charita Amruta, this nectar of Chaitanya Charita, all should learn Bengali. Otherwise, no releasement. You say, how it is written? Tabe sai premar under anubhav hoy, kabhu jodi ei premar hoy asroy, Krishna thinks, if I become asroy, then I can release it. Otherwise, no possibility. So this thought is there. Very deep thought. Very deep. Intense thought. Very deep and intense. Krishna is thinking. Do you understand? That lobha. The word lobha is here. Do you understand? Lobha. Greed. Greed for Radha Prema is greed, very intense greed, unsuppressible, cannot be suppressed. Then understand? In the heart, it is like throbbing. Then understand? Thak, 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 thak. Do you understand? If you prepare what you say, we prepare milk with rice, sweet rice, when it becomes very thick. Ever? Have you prepared it? When it becomes very thick, you, you mark how it is. Thak, 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 thak. Isn't it? Becomes thak, 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 thak. Dhakadaki. Isn't it? Dhakadaki. 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 prema lobha dhakadaki. Dhakadaki. It's very intense, great, intense thought. Thak, 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 thak. Such a word we use here. You can't realize if you want to learn Bengali. There's a special flavor, a special sweetness in the original words of Srila Krishnadas Kabiraj Goswami, of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that no translation can do justice to. And once you start understanding the meaning of the words of one verse, it becomes so much easier to understand the meaning of the words of another verse and on and on and on like that. It just becomes easier and easier. And you start exercising the memory muscle, so you're, you're able to retain things better. And the more easier it becomes, the more excitement there is to, to learn more verses because it's like a, a new superpower. <laughs> Sanskrit is a lot more difficult, but these verses of Chaitanya Charitamrita are so simple and straightforward. And as we go through these verses, I'll give little tips that I've learned along the way and 
little hacks to be able to understand the language, the grammar, and everything more easily. You don't ever really need to make so much effort to learn Bengali separately. Just memorizing these verses and starting to, with a little bit of help, understanding why the word is like this, and that's all you really need to be able to start understanding verses of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Now, I just want to let you know beforehand that not all the verses that we're memorizing are going to be verses that you'll hear quoted all the time. Although I'd say a majority of the verses are commonly quoted. I find it's really helpful to memorize a string of verses on a complete topic. And once you've revised all the verses enough, then it sticks in your head forever. You'll, you'll never forget it. And then whenever you want to go back to, say, Rupa Shiksha and, and meditate on the verses, it's all there. And, and you're able to get the whole flow. If you just memorize like one verse here and then another verse there, and and you're not remembering a string of verses, then you don't get the flow. I find this proper exercising of the brain, absorbing it in these topics, really elevates it and it automatically kicks out all sorts of junk that's in there. There's so much more to say on the topic of memorizing verses, the benefits, the process, and we will be going through that throughout this program. I was originally planning to read something on the glories of Srila Rupa Goswami from my Gurudev's edition of Madhuri Kadambini, text 2. And also, I was going to read from this book, Sri Chaitanya and His Associates by Srila Bhakti with Tirtha Goswami Maharaj, of all the events leading up to Rupa Shiksha. But now it's getting kind of late. <laughs> and as I'm editing this video, I see that it's already made it up to nearly 12 minutes. So I think that's long enough for a video. So, um, just to start our program on this day of Akshay Tritya, which is the day you begin things, I'm going to go over the Mangala Charan verse of this Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhyalila chapter 19, which is the chapter that we're studying from. And just letting you know, they're going to be opening up the doors in our mat really soon, and we are going to have darshan of our Radhavino to be Hariju, all covered in chandan. So, after the verse, I will share a picture of that here. And the, the two things for Rupa Goswami, I will post that all tomorrow morning. All right, so let's get to it. I just came back from the temple and the Sringar was so beautiful. <laughs> I'll, I'll share a video with you afterwards. So these next two verses that we're going to go over, you don't need to memorize them. We're just going to recite them to start the program. But the verse that we'll get for memorization will be on Tuesday. So, um, yeah, this is the Mangala Charan verse, and also the first verse uh, before Mahaprabhu starts instructing Rupa Goswami. That these are the two verses we'll go over. Okay, let me move this down, make this small. All right. Vrindavani yang rasake livartam. Kalena luptam nija shaktim utka Sancharya rupe vyatanot punasa Prabhur vidho prag eva loka srishtim At the beginning of creation, by making his own potency flow through the heart of Brahma, Sri Bhagavan created and expanded the worlds. In the same way, by eagerly making his own potency flow through the heart of Srila Rupa Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again expounded and spread throughout the world the playful, rust-laden topics of Raj, which had been forgotten over time. E mata dasha dina prayage rahiya Shri Rupa Shiksha Dilo Shakti Sanchariya. So, E Mata, in this way, Dash Din, for 10 days, Sriman Mahaprabhu, he stayed, Rohiya, he stayed Prayage, in Prayag. Shri Rupa, to Shri Rupa, Shiksha Dilo, he gave Shiksha, he gave instruction, thus infusing him, Sanchariya, with Shakti. Shakti Sancharya, infusing him with power, empowering Srila Rupa Goswami. E mata dasha dina prayage rahiya, 
श्री रूपे शिक्षा दिलो शक्ति संचारिया All right, so that's the program for today. <laughs> And yeah, look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Jai Shri Sachinandan Gaur Hari Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Vinod Bihari Ju Ki Jai Jai Shri Lo Guru Dev Ki Jai Shri Lo Prabhu Par Ki Jai Shri Lo Rupa Goswami Par Ki Jai Shri Rupa Nugu Gauriya Guru Varga Ki Jai Shri Akshay Tritya Ki Jai Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Sudarshan Chakra Ju Ki Jai Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai Shinitai Gaur Primanande Hari Hari Bol. All right, so here is the video. Hare Sridha Kama Raku Cha Ma Oh, oh, oh.